Hi everyone, Paul Elam here. Daddy, did I tell you I was psychotic? You couldn't buy this kind of crazy if you were Bill Gates. A boys for Men, now AVFM Education, LLC. A an absolute circle jerk of anger and self-destruction. And of course, if you don't like it, I'll just ignore you um, and pretend that you're a feminist. If men thought with anything other than their dicks, 98% of them wouldn't give you the time of day. Get the fuck out of my house. And by the way, you can take that bitch with you because she's obviously of no use to me either. What's a girl got to do to get raped around here? <laughs> we also need to revamp women. Frankly, all that stuff is self-betraying garbage for weak, insecure men who don't believe in themselves. I don't mean that in a homosexual way. Hold the fucking phone! Just leading men on to bilk a few dollars. World of feminist government in which we now find ourselves living. Fuck me because That's... I'm obsessed with rape. You know? Uh, I don't have the good sense to be quiet about anything. Brevity is bliss, in the bedroom and out. Am I crazy? Or... Yes, Paul. Yes, you are. And you can tell that just from your crazy, crazy eyes. Hello there, hello there, hello there, and welcome to episode 33 of The Descent of Man, O Sphere. The series where I take you through the ways in which the Manosphere and its utterly reprehensible douchebag inhabitants are trying to reverse human evolution and drag us all back into the fucking sea. And today, we're dealing with a man who very much lives up to his surname in that he's a backward male. Yes, it's the deadbeat dad and owner-operator of the internet swamp known as A Voice for Men, it's Paul Elam! Now, this is very much the one we've all been waiting for, because this guy is the king turd in the sewer that is the men's rights movement. And as I mentioned, he is the founder of, and the continued operator of, A Voice for Men, which is very much the sort of main hub for MRA dipshittery here on the interwebs. And even though he's a relatively popular and well-known figure within the MRM, he has basically fallen out with every other leading MRM in the fucking world outside of one or two. I mean, seriously, this guy could start a fucking argument in a vacuum. Now, it almost goes without saying that Paul Elam, because he's featured in this series, doesn't really like women. I mean, he really is not a fan at all. And yes, by the way, I am saying that at least 80% of women are emotional reasoners and in their raw state are unfit for intimacy, consistent communication, problem solving, or being anything other than a life-sucking pain in the ass. You do it because you think she embraces traditional values that make her loyal to you and to a marriage. Wrong. She longs for the promise mall, just like the rest of them. The best suggestion I can make is that when a woman asks you what you want in a woman, tell her your penis. If she tries to take you up on it, run like hell. Or, if you're feeling really adventurous, Tell her you want a woman who gives good head, doesn't talk too much, and turns into a pizza and a six-pack at midnight. I mean, why would any man pay any attention to you at all were it not for the prospect of boning you? That choice will likely determine whether you can attract the rarity of a virtuous woman or whether you end up with a gaudy-looking piece of shit snorting coke in the nightclub restroom. One, I am not equating women to dogs and not just because dogs are loyal and unconditionally loving. Now, having jokingly mentioned his crazy eyes, and they are fucking crazy eyes, one of the things that shows him up as genuinely a not very sort of stable human being, I would suggest, is the fact that he doesn't just dislike women, he fucking hates women. And he, for me, is a clear and present danger to the safety of women. Now, if we use her logic, does that mean that somebody should find her and put a bullet in her head? Summoning the will to follow through and inflict pain by exploiting those fears can be tough. All I can tell you is that it's on you to do it. Because they're playing, poli they're t they're playing the sexual politics game onto the battlefield where it does not belong. Um, don't get me wrong. I think that all female units would be a good thing. Of course, they're not going to do that because they're not going to have male strength there to depend on, and they would get slaughtered. And, 
and any concern you have about causing her pain. Add in any hesitation you have ever had to take off the figurative gloves and go bare knuckles on her crazy ass. I want you to know about what the real drop in crime is about. It was the don't be that guy posters. <laughs>but he basically sends a skewer up her rectum till it comes out of her mouth and then turns her over a roasting pit uh, for a good 20 minute read. You'll love it. It begins with understanding what makes her tick and being willing to use that information to inflict pain. Yeah, this guy is a real fucking asshole. His constant use of violent imagery throughout his rhetoric, and of course things like this, where he stated that if he were on a jury for a rape trial, even in the face of overwhelming evidence, he would always vote not guilty. Thereby denying a fair trial and any semblance of justice for a rape victim. All of that shit should be of real concern. This man is a clear and present danger. But seems as though he hates women, that must mean that he really likes men, right? And not just that, but he likes them just the way they are. The only people that I completely distrust on sight are those that constantly put adjectives in front of the word man. Words like good and strong and especially real. It's all bullshit designed to control and shame. Have a great new year. Have a prosperous new year. And most importantly, have a new year where you're free uh, to be who you were supposed to be, uh, to live your life as a free man uh, unencumbered by social expectations. Uh, I would be the last person to, to say a guy was making a wrong choice. AVFM supports men and fathers, married and single, because we are not in the business of telling men what they should be. You see, he really isn't in the business of telling men what they ought to be at all. In fact, the entire thrust of my argument here is that the monstrous social degeneration we are now witnessing more than anything else is the result of outmoded and horribly misguided masculinity. Like, and I'm asking gay male feminists out there, are, are you like fucking slow or something? Men, on the other hand, for the most part, spend every day of their lives proving what gullible, brain-dead fuckknuckles they really are. I know, I know, someone's out there right now saying... Hey, man, that's shaming language. Not cool. Well, sorry, but fuck that. And you just go on to be a mangina. Men can be incredibly, indescribably stupid where it concerns women. Because men are that fucking dumb and that fucking weak. Bitch at me if you want to, guys. You know it's true. All right, well, perhaps not then. And you see, there's a really serious point here, okay? Um, because... This vicious hatred he has for human beings in general is one of the main reasons that not only is he not a positive net benefit to the MRM, but he is actively a roadblock to the change that they supposedly seek. Because no politician with any actual chance of influencing anything is even going to touch the MRM with a shitty stick when you have people like Elam as influential, leading, prominent figures in that movement. I mean, seriously, you need to ditch pricks like Elam if you're hoping to have any real change on, you know, uh, governmental policy or society in general. Sort yourselves the fuck out, guys. Now, within his disdain for men more generally, there is a burning hatred for one man in particular. This is David Futrell's crowd. You know, David Futrell is going to forget that qualification you just offered. Somebody who's is so greasy that they spend like David Futrell. Well, there's a fourth kind of guy. That's David Futrell. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Yes, David Futrell of the We Hunted the Mammoth blog, uh, which is linked below, by the way, you should definitely go and check that out, uh, is reviled within the men's rights movement because he dares to report on their activities. And uh, Paul Elam, like all extremists, really doesn't like the public getting to know too much about the truth to do with his movement and the hateful fuck-knuckles that exist within it. And the fact that Elam despises Futrell so much means that I fucking love the guy. Seriously, you keep doing you, Dave.
Now, rather laughably, Elam in recent years has tried to rebrand the MRM into the MHRM, the Men's Human Rights Movement. Now, any observer can see that the men's rights movement is not to do with human rights at all. But worse still is that they are actively trying to curtail the rights and freedoms that people already have. Roe v. Wade was the worst Supreme Court decision ever. In fact, were it not for men engaging in this mindless form of collective patricide, feminism would have been deservedly quashed at least 30 years ago. So asking if women can vote, no, it's not misogyny. It's a legitimate provocative, interesting question. My answer? No. Women should not vote. But those who cannot be compelled to defend their country, who are indeed exempt from that risk from the moment of birth, should not have a voice in how it is run. If you can't be forced into an induction center simply because you're female, then perhaps you shouldn't be allowed into a voting booth for exactly the same reason. And believe it or not, this is the same Paul Elam that dared to have a go at Amnesty International. Oh yeah, did I not mention that? Yeah, he attacked Amnesty International because they wouldn't let him use their London offices. I'll explain. The International Conference for Men's Issues, which was held in London in 2016, which was featured in episode 29, it got its own special, that event, um, episode 29 of this series, uh, which I'll leave linked below, fuck it, it's my channel, I can advertise what I like. Um, <laughs> so, he wanted to use the offices of Amnesty International in London, not because he felt that it was necessarily like, the best location or the best price or whatever, he wanted to have the Amnesty International brand name, which is a proper actual human rights organisation, um, associated with his hateful group of fucking bigoted twatbags. But, Amnesty International took a look at his organisation and said, no, we are not fucking lending out to you because you're pricks. Now, I'm paraphrasing there, they actually said it in a much more humane and decent way because, you know, it's Amnesty International, not some prick on the internet. But that's basically what they were saying to him. And so he and uh, AVFM went into a fucking meltdown saying, oh, they've betrayed uh, their human rights cause, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, Paul, Amnesty International is an organisation that actually does human rights work. It actually has helped the lives of men and boys and women and girls across the fucking world. You haven't helped anyone. You have crimmed money out of the MRM, quite a lot of it, over the last few years, and given fuck all back in return. As I mentioned, not only have you given nothing back, but you're actually actively a roadblock to them, so go fuck yourself. But who would have thought that a bigoted extremist like Paul Elam would have had such a problem with political correctness? All we need at this point in the equation is you. Your attendance, along with so many others who want to stand up against political correctness, then political correctness You should learn to think outside your little PC box there. Yes, he's one of these anti-PC fucking nutbags. And not because he's like an out and out complete and utter Nazi fucking racist KKK merchant. I don't think he's anywhere near that. He's just a sort of petty small minded bigot and thinks that somehow him being called a racist and a sexist and a misogynist is somehow worse than him actually being a racist, a sexist and a misogynist. He's just a complete and utter fucking arsehole. But anyway, moving on. Now it's time for... Yes, it's the almost inevitable bit about Lacey Green. Yippee! Did that annoy you already, kids? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I've noticed the same thing. You look at Jessica Valenti, Mark Hott, Rebecca Watson, all of these... Uh, especially the women. The guys are a little more animated sometimes. But what you see, even in Lacey Green, is really the eyes of Shark. No, she doesn't, Paul. She has the eyes of an angel. You, on the other hand, have crazy eyes. Crazy eyes. But anyway, enough of this nonsense. Let's go on with the main part of the video. We all know what it's going to be about, because now it's time for...
Yes, it's the inevitable bit about rape. I mean, buckle up, people, because this one, this one gets bad. This one gets very, very fucking bad. Because this guy is, if you'll allow me to recycle a piece of material from episode one of this series, Rohypnol royalty. He is the Duke of date rape denialism. He is very much the Viscount of victim blaming. He is the sovereign of, so what was she doing in that part of town? What was she dressed like? I bet she was dressed like a slut. He is very much the Marquis of, maybe she deserved it, she had a drink or two. Seriously, we'll get onto that one in a fucking bit. But basically, this guy is a complete and total fucking asshole of truly monumental proportions. Now, I would have said of biblical proportions, but that would have been unfair on the Bible because even the Bible isn't as fucking messed up when it comes to the issue of sexual assault as this guy. And that's fucking saying something. So firstly, we're going to take a look at an article of his entitled Challenging the Etiology of Rape. Now, as it's an article, I thought it would be really boring of me to just read the article and then respond to it. And it might be slightly confusing for those who don't necessarily always watch the screen but like to listen to it or whatever because that's, I mean, that's a way that some people watch YouTube videos and stuff. So what I've decided to do for uh, this article and indeed any other subsequent articles from any other um, f future episodes of this is to have a guest uh, read the article aloud and then me respond to that. So it would be them reading the words of the person uh, who is the subject of the individual video. So for the inaugural guest reader of article-ness is uh, Dr. Christy Winters. Her channel is linked below. Seriously, click off this fucking trash and go and watch her channel. It's way better than mine, trust me. But she's going to be reading uh, the article and then I'll be responding to it. And it is a word-for-word -word reading of the article itself, a copy of which uh, will be linked in the description box. But what you will find is it's not the original article in this instance, because the original article has now been taken down. But it is an archived copy of the article below, so you can go and check that we aren't putting words in Paul's mouth or anything like that. Um, and again, that will apply to any future articles and any future guest speakers in the future. Okay, with that fucking boring shy out of the way, Christy, take it away. Challenging the Etiology of Rape by Paul Elam We have all heard it before. Anytime a serious discussion of rape makes it to national airwaves, there is always the obligatory feminist pinhead presented as the expert du jour that somehow feels compelled to admonish us all to remember that rape is not about sex but power. Not about physical attraction, but about control and domination. So firstly, Paul, you call the generic feminist who's being interviewed in your little example there a pinhead, and then describe that feminist having described rape in an absolutely accurate way, because regardless of what you want to try and convince yourself of, um, rape is about power and control. It's got nothing to do with sex or uh, sexual attraction or lust. So already we're off to a fucking blistering start in terms of you exposing yourself as the prick that you are. Acknowledging the fact that using our brains forces us to concede that rape is, in fact, about sex and reproduction. Indeed, that's the only thing that makes any sense at all. And the descent into madness begins. Paul, do you have any evidence for that claim whatsoever? I know you don't. It's a rhetorical question. Don't worry, I know it's a long word. It just means you don't necessarily have to answer it. It's fine, okay? I know you don't have any evidence because all of the evidence produced on this topic shows that actually it's got fuck all to do with sex and reproduction or any of that trash that you just wrote. But I do have to wonder, Paul, what is your intention here? Because it seems to me like what you're trying to do is convince your audience of this entirely false narrative in order to try and normalise rape, which would mean that you're a massive piece of shit, wouldn't it? Indeed, that's the only thing that makes any sense at all. Reality doesn't care what makes sense to you, you fucking dickhead. Just go and do some research on this topic, please. And no, listening to Rougerie does not count as fucking research, okay? Since the PC edicts to believe otherwise are wasted in a place like this, it raises yet another question that needs to be asked. Do women ask for it? I don't mean that in the sense that they are literally asking men to rape them, though this clearly does happen outside the context of this post. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ almighty. Yep, we're going there, people. This gets bad. This gets very, very bad. What I mean is, do women who dress and act provocatively, who taunt men sexually, toying, with their libidos for personal power and gain, have the same type of responsibility for what happens to them as, say, someone who parks their car in a bad neighborhood with the keys in the ignition and leaves it unlocked with the motor running. 
Paul, you are the very blatant rape apologist that you and your fucking god-awful website pretend don't exist. Obviously, we still blame the car thief for the actual theft, but don't most of us turn to the person who owned the car and at least want to ask, what the fuck were you thinking? Wouldn't the insurance company take a dim view of paying a claim in the midst of such stupid irresponsibility? We should, though, also remember that at least the guy who set himself up to have his car jacked wasn't doing anything sinister to begin with. Stupid, but not sinister. We can't say the same for some of these women. So according to Paul, women who get raped are sinister. But you'll also notice that uh, rapists themselves have escaped Paul's ire completely here. I think from that we can deduce exactly where his loyalties lie. In that light, I have some ideas about women who spend evenings in bars hustling men for drinks, playing on their sexual desires so they can get shit-faced on the beta dole, paying their bar tab with the pussy pass, and the women who drink and make out doing everything short of sex with men all evening and then go home to his apartment at 2 a.m. Sometimes both of these women end up being the victims of rape. But are these women asking to get raped? In the most severe and emphatic terms possible, the answer is no, they are not asking to get raped. They are freaking begging for it, damn near demanding it. I don't think even the powerful majestic beauty of the English language is enough to describe what a monumentally evil thing it is you've just said. All the outraged PC demands to get huffy and point out how nothing justifies or excuses rape won't change the fact that there are a lot of women who get pummeled and pumped because they are stupid and often arrogant enough to walk through life with the equivalent of a I'm a stupid conniving bitch please rape me neon sign glowing above their empty little narcissistic heads. Let's turn this around for a second, right? Let's turn this around on Paul and make this about men on this occasion, right? A man commits a crime and is quite rightly punished for that crime. His punishment is a jail term. Now, he knew before committing that crime precisely what goes on in jails. We all know what goes on in jails. There's lots of rape goes on in jails, isn't there? Okay? So, he knew full well going in the dangers of doing that crime, potentially going to prison, okay? But yet, he still did the crime. And whilst he's in prison, he um, takes a shower. Now, he knows full well that whilst in prison, he's around a lot of sexually frustrated men. They've not been able to engage in normal, horizontal delights, let's say. For quite some time. And so he's around these sexually frustrated men who are also quite violent. Many of them sociopathic, possibly some of them psychopathic. And yet he decides to go for a shower, stands there completely naked, rubbing himself all over, lathering himself up in soap, his chest glistening in the sunlight, no doubt. Um, can we really then say that when some of his fellow inmates hold him down and gang rape him for two hours, can we really say that he's a victim in that scenario? Yes! Obviously we fucking can. As indeed is the case with the woman in the scenario that you gave there, that has a drink, maybe she kisses a bloke, maybe she flirts with him a little bit. I mean, how low are your fucking standards for male behaviour that you think that men shouldn't be held accountable for anything they basically do? Like, what, a man can't fucking control himself? What, because he buys her a drink and she kisses him? That, that means, oh, pff, he can basically rape away. Because there's no victim there, is there? I mean, you really are a fucking sick individual. In my opinion, the plight from being raped should draw about as much sympathy as a man who loses a wallet full of cash after leaving it lying around a bus station unattended. Perhaps if we start curbing our automatic outrage over what happens to women who are begging for and insisting on trouble, then maybe a few of them will be more prone to decisions that turn out to be a little better for them. Just saying. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Paul Elam clearly thinks, therefore, that uh, men who get raped in prison um, deserved it. They were asking for it. They were damn near begging for it. Unless, of course, he holds a sexist double standard, which shows that he's perfectly okay with women getting raped. Yeah, I think it's that second option.
Now that's the end of the article proper. But old fucking crazy eyes himself wasn't done yet. There was an addendum added sometime after. Christy, take it away. Addendum. I have noted the objections of some MRAs here to the perspective expressed in this article about the etiology of rape. After careful consideration, I reject those concerns. What a fucking surprise. A man-baby refuses to accept when he's wrong. Wow, hold the fucking presses. I am not painting men as incapable of controlling their sexual impulses. Yes, you are, Paul. That is precisely what you're saying. Okay, And in doing so, by the way, you've shown yourself to be way more misandrist than basically any feminist I've ever really fucking heard of, outside of maybe some really fringe characters. But everyone in mainstream feminism would never possibly think of men as that lowly, as that fucking base. So I have to ask you, Paul, why do you hate men so much? And Christy rather nicely summed it up at the end, after she'd finished reading the article. She added her own little impromptu reaction, which I thought I'd share with you anyway, because I think it really sums up my attitude towards this piece of fucking textual filth as well. And now I'm going to go rinse my mouth out with mouthwash after I puke. Yeah, I think that's about right, really. Um, thank you to Christy for... Um, reading that um, awful piece of fucking trash. Again, her channel is linked below. Uh, please go and check her out, subscribe, uh, show her some love. She's fucking epic. Now, before I let you go, one last thing to do with Paul's uncomfortable friendliness towards those who rape, let's say. Um, is a thing that not only exposes that itself, but also shows how Paul, like all the other extremists, will say one thing when they're being interviewed on like a public platform on national TV or you know on a mainstream uh, platform, but then when they're speaking to their own audience, will say a very different thing. Yes, the problems you are addressing are, are real and, and there are injustices, but when only 3% of rape cases end up in a conviction anyway, you could hardly say that the system is flooded with uh, vexatious complaints. It's not a matter of saying that the system is flooded with vexatious complaints. Yep, that's uh, Paul being interviewed by an Australian morning talk show type thing called, I think, Sunrise AM or some absurd show. I don't know. I mean, Australia's a weird place. They've got, like, kangaroos just about the place. Like, that's normal. Anyway, it's like it's basically like a massive desert zoo. It's ridiculous. Anyway, um, only kidding. I love you, Australia. And he says the obviously untrue thing, which is that he doesn't think it's all about, you know, vexatious claims in the system and blah, blah, blah. Whereas actually, when he's on his own platforms, talking to his own crowd, he says shit like this all the fucking time. The judicial apparatus has been reshaped not to pursue justice, but to incarcerate men at every opportunity, even to enable and encourage false accusations to accomplish that goal. What this reeks up to me is false rape culture and the consequences of rape hysteria and sexual harassment hysteria and sexual abuse hysteria. We have dangers in the family court system and we have dangers in the court system if you're not even married. I mean, there's the, the problems of false accusations and, and everything else is like, is like walking through a minefield. And that's all I've got to say on this. I mean, it's uh, we are in an epidemic of lying skanks on college campuses and other places. Ah, so you're a lying piece of shit, Paul. Well done. You do think that it's all about vexatious claims. So why did you blatantly lie when you're on the mainstream platform? It's because you, like your fellow extremists, will say one thing in order to try and garner mainstream support when you're in front of a mainstream audience. And then when you're able to, you'll take your moderate mask off and go back to your natural form, which is slime. But anyway, let's wrap this shit up, because frankly, I've had enough of Paul Elam for a lifetime, although... Rest assured, I'm sure I will return to this fetid swamp of a man at some point in the future. There was lots of stuff I didn't get onto, just for the sake of time. Uh, things like the fact that he's a deadbeat dad. Um, 
again I've left a link to uh, We Hunted the Mammoth blog if you type in like Paul Elam Deadbeat or something uh, there'll be lots of articles there which will explain all of that but anywho um, I didn't get on to mentioning his sickening um, acceptance it would seem of uh, domestic violence against women although obviously I did to a degree touch upon it in the uh, violence against women more generally bit but his <sighs> His views on domestic violence are really, really rather unsettling. Um, he's, he really is a fucking foul human being. I didn't get onto mentioning his support of Donald Trump. Yeah, no, a massive misogynist racist piece of shit uh, that supports Donald Trump. Yeah, I, I was shocked too. I barely got to touch upon the fact that he is a petty-minded racist fucking arsehole. And he is, and that sort of brings me on to, in a roundabout way, the kind of wrap-up completely of him and why he's such a negative influence on the lives of men and boys because basically what his whole ethos is isn't even about all men and boys anyway it's essentially white straight men that's about it it's no different than a number of other extremist groups um he doesn't seem to give two fucks about like race relations or anything like that he's come out against black lives matter even though black lives matter are trying to stop black men from being shot dead in the fucking streets but apparently that's absolutely fine but then again we saw him say to uh, david futrell that um he should kill himself which again puts pay to the lie that he gives a fuck about male suicide it's just another way that he can try and beat women um metaphorically although like i say with the domestic violence thing who knows but ultimately he's negative in a number of other ways because just encouraging the angry circle jerk of of misogyny that he does through AVFM and through his speeches and, and uh, public appearances and whatnot, he betrays the very people he's supposedly trying to help and who have come to him for help. Because if these men could just go on the internet and call their ex-wives a cunt, which is basically all that the, most of them fucking seem to do, it seems to me, um, that can be used against you in, say, a divorce hearing or in... Uh, a custody battle or whatever, right? Because you can then be seen as like an unstable influence in the child's life by attacking the mother. I mean, it's it's really basic shit. And so Paul Elam is not just bad in the sense that he stops any actual political progress being made, but he it negatively influences the individuals within his movement by encouraging them to follow his path of just being an angry fucking asshole on the internet. But it also doesn't help them emotionally. I mean, just being an angry fuck on the internet just means that's sort of all you're ever going to be. It it doesn't allow for any emotional development or change. And that's sort of ultimately, I think, why Paulie Lamb does this, because he doesn't want to feel alone as the angry misogynist fuck on the internet. And so he's encouraged and, and enabled the development of a community of like-minded pricks. And it's a real shame, because actual human beings are being hurt by this man's activities. And I'm not just talking about the women that could potentially be hurt, but I'm talking about the men in his own movement as well. He doesn't give a fuck about them, obviously. He's just using them to milk money and avoid having to get a real fucking job and be a productive member of society and stuff. And that's really fucking sickening. I mean, it really is. I, I can't stress that enough. It's really profoundly disgusting. On top of all of the other stuff, on top of the, the fucking uh, rape apology and domestic violence apology and fucking just bigoted shit all round. That's sort of on a, on a moral, individual fucking level. Arguably the worst thing he does is betray and milk the very people he's supposedly trying to help. Although, frankly, they're all morally disgusting things. So, I mean, who knows? I suppose it depends what mood you're in. Yeah, he's just... You. In general, really. I can't sum it up better than that. You. So, um, yeah, that's about your lot, really. I, I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but having gone through Paulie Lamb's mind and body of work, I just, I don't know that they make showers hot enough to ever feel clean again. He's just, God, this one was depressing, people. Um, you'd better press the thumbs up button, seriously, otherwise, otherwise I'll poke Rory. Rory. Do stuff. But anyway, that leaves me with just one thing left to say. Paul Elam, go fuck yourself.
Watching the 